Hello and welcome you all for the next video lecture. This video lecture is on uh, McNamara's test. Uh, what we'll be doing here is we have two categorical data, group one and group two. Two variables are there. Whether uh, yeah, these two groups are paired data. That's an important thing. These two paired groups, whether they have any relationship between them. So that we would like to test, and uh, this particular analysis or evaluation is performed using McNamara's test. Let us see what it is. <coughs> McNamara's test is a non-parametric test for a paired categorical data. Most important aspect here is the data must be paired. So if you have a paired data and it's categorical data, you can use McNamara's test. We'll be using a two into two, uh, two by two contingency table for the analysis. And this particular test follows a chi-square distribution. In fact, it's for a large sample uh, chi-square distribution. For a small sample, we have another mechanism, uh, that is a binomial distribution we'll be using. Just let me take some case example. Uh, say that you are analyzing a retrospective case control study, and uh, if each treatment is paired with a control, that means case and control they are paired. In that case, the events are uh, that is uh, events are paired in this case. Uh, you will be evaluating the um, exposed or unexposed condition by that. Uh, then analysis of uh, experiment where two treatments are given to matched pairs. So you will be analyzing uh, for a matched pair. Pair is there that is taken as one group for that treatment you will be analyzing. So this is a general combination you generally get for a two into two contingency table. You have a treatment and outcome. Uh, treatment could be before and after two cohorts let me say. For that, you have two response: event present, event not present. This is the usual case what we generally get. So we can modify this experimental design in this way: treatment one and treatment two. I'll be taking it in cross, that is uh, horizontal, that is row wise and column wise. Treatment one and treatment two. Say it's before and after uh, for a given combination. So this particular case A is nothing but it has undergone treatment one as well as undergone treatment two. In both the case, response is one, whereas this one for one treatment response is uh, two. Another case, the response is one. That is, so here treatment one response is one, treatment two response is two. Likewise, you have different things. So the two treatments are done on the same uh, subject or a group of subject exhibiting two responses. So they are clubbed over here, or either here or here or here. In the four cells, it is clubbed. So 2n becomes n for that reason. So that is their pair, and rest is the same way. That is marginal sums will be calculating. Just to give you an idea, let me take this case. <coughs> we have asked a question to a matched pair. Consider that a couple, husband and wife, right? So you have asked a question separately to them. So the possibility is that both are answering yes to the question. Both are answering yes to the question. Let me say this is husband answering and this is wife answering, right? So say they may say yes or no. As wife may say yes or no. What is that combination? So both are answering yes. That is here. Both are answering yes. Another possibility is that both are answering no. So that is here. No versus no. Now you have another two combinations. One says yes, other says no, and uh, the reverse way. That is B and C. These are one of them says yes, another says no. One of them says yes, another says no. In this case, now this one where both are answering yes or no, it's called as concordant pair. It is not of much use in our analysis. We will be concentrating in those two cases where one of them says yes, another says no. That is, different responses are there for the two treatments for the groups, and they are called as discordant pairs. The B and C discordant pairs. They are of much interest for us in doing the analysis. So a concordant pair is a matched pair in which the outcome is same for each member of the pair. It is A and D. A and D. A and D are the concordant pair. Total number of concordant pairs are A plus D. Similarly, a discordant pair is a matched pair in which the outcomes differ for the member of the pair. Within the pair, the outcomes are different. One has one outcome, the other has other outcome. 
So B plus C number of discordant pairs are there. Total number of discordant pairs is B plus C. The discordant pairs, when you want to recognize them, they are B and C. Right? Now, this discordant pair which is of more interest to us, there are two types, type A and a type B. Type A is nothing but the horizontal row wise I am considering. Treatment one member has the event, that is type A. Here, that is B, treatment number one. For treatment number one member, he has the response. Event is present, the other one is not present. This is B. Whereas type B is nothing but treatment number two member has the event. Treatment number two column has the event. So that is type B. So the type A is B number and C numbers of C frequency of type B is present. B frequency of type A is present. So we will be analyzing based on this type A and type B using McNeema's test. So the concept goes like this. Probability of occurrence of type A and type B both will be considering. How do we measure probability for a contingency table? It's like this. Probability of any cell you take it. There are four cells. Any cell you take it. The probability of occurrence of that particular frequency is that particular value divided by rho, its row sum. That is B divided by A plus B. So the probability of B is nothing but B divided by A plus B. Probability of C is C divided by C plus B. So it is the probability row wise. You will be considering. Alright. So you will be considering A type and B type. The probability of occurrence of A type. Probability of occurrence of B type. So we will be considering this. Whether they are equal. If they are equal, two treatments are equally effective. If one of them is greater or the other one is lesser. So you can conclude either one of them is more effective and the other one is less effective. So our null hypothesis is always it's equivalent. All it says all uh, probabilities are equal. There is no difference between the treatments for that. Probability of discordant pair, any discordant pair you take, P of A or P of B, both are equal to 0.5. That is this one. P of type A, P of type B, both are equal to 0 0.5. That's our null hypothesis. Alternative hypothesis for two-tailed test it is not equal to 0 0.5. For one tail, you can go for either less than or equal to ugly, less than or greater than condition. Now let us look at the test method. How do we test the contingency table using McNeemus test method? For that, you can go for normally I am using two tail test method here for explanation. Uh, that is uh, both the side of the uh, distribution you will be considering. That is total 5%. We will be taking 95% uh, confidence interval if you say. So the extreme ends will be considering. Now that test is based on ND for a large sample and for a small sample. For a large sample we consider ND is greater than or equal to 20. For a small sample size we say ND less than 20. What is this ND? This ND is not equal to N. It is not N. Instead this ND is nothing but number of discordant pairs. That is B plus C. Number of discordant pairs B plus C. So these two values you sum it up. B plus C, if they are equal to 20 or greater than 20, go for large sample test method. Or otherwise, if it is less than 20, go for small sample test method. How do we do that? Here is the equation. For a large sample test, it is a chi-square distribution applicable. So, you will be using a, a chi-square test method. It is just a chi-square method. B minus C, modulus of B minus C then it's a positive value note that b minus c modulus means it's a positive number integer so this positive integer minus one then take the square of it so don't forget about this modulus part it's very important so take a modulus first then minus one square it divided by b plus c so you will be requiring only these two frequencies here p and c now once you calculate this chi square this is the test statistic Go to the uh, chi square distribution table for alpha is equal to 0 0.05. Degrees of freedom is 1 here. As I told you earlier, degrees of freedom for chi square test is r minus 1 into c minus 1. r is number of rows, column c, right? c number of uh, columns. So r minus 1 into c minus 1, here r is 2 and c is 2. Number of rows 2, number of columns 2. So the degrees of freedom for chi square test is 1 in this case. So calculate the chi square from the distribution table. If calculated value is greater than table value, then reject the H0. This is the method of chi-square. 
is a modified method with the correction factor is called as the AIDS correction factor is considered which is commonly used in almost all software uh, as on date. Then uh, if for a lower sample that is a lower sample size you will be using this particular method. Now there are three conditions. If, if B and C are both are equal since ND is less than 20 let us compare B and C. Based on this you will be using any one of the equation. If both are equal B and C both are equal P is equal to 1. Now, if B is greater than C or less than C, then you will be using this equation. Say that this B, that is type A discordant pair, uh, if that particular frequency is less than type B, you will be using this equation. How, what is the difference between this equation? Both look at it. It is a two-tailed test multiplied by 2. Then you will be summing it up over K is equal to 0 to B, but here it is B to ND. Look at this. This B is considered here. B and ND this is also considered so this is a lower range so you can divide 0 to ND into two parts one is 0 to B second one is B to ND so you can observe here it is B is less than C means for a low value of B you will go for lower range 0 to B for a higher value of B comparing with C for a higher value of B you will go going for higher range that is B and versus B to ND so that's easy to remember. So lower value of B compared to C, you'll go for lower range, 0 to B. And higher value of B, you'll go for B to N, upper range. Then remaining thing is same. It's a binomial distribution that you'll be calculating here. Combination of K uh, with the ND total, right? K combinations of ND. Here also K combinations of ND, 0 0.5 power ND, total numbers. Right? So this is the formula that you'll be using. So you need to be careful with this and comparison. So, you will be calculating the probability value here. You have taken alpha which is usually 0.05. You will be calculating the p value. If that p value is lesser than alpha, then you will be rejecting the H0. Let us take one illustration. Uh, I have taken two illustrations here to give you the two different methods. I have taken uh, one person on whom uh, in fact it is a case on uh, COVID-19. So, the same person, one person is tested using two different methods. One is RT-PCR test uh, where swabs are taken and RT-PCR is tested and is tested for whether he is positive or negative for COVID-19. Then another method, antibody test, same person is tested using antibody, antibody test method, uh, blood sampling. There he will be uh, labeled as either positive for COVID-19 or negative for COVID-19. I am interested in finding out whether there exists any difference in the outcome of the two different methods. Two different methods. Whether they are same or different. I would like to analyze. I have got a prep lab. In my lab samples to come and uh, the data I will be recording like this. So 40 samples have come into my lab as on today. So when I analyze whether they are positive or negative, compare the two things, I have got this particular frequency table. So I calculate the marginal sum. My null hypothesis says that there is no difference in outcome of two test methods, right? Alternative says there exists two difference in the two test methods and I will take alpha is equal to 0 0.05. Alright, when I do the analysis here, I will have to consider discordant pairs, that is B and C. B and C, 4 plus 8, 12. 12 is less than 20, right? 12 is less than 20 plus one more thing is B is less than C. What should I do? Should I go for large sample test or small sample test? ND is less than 20, that means I have to go for small sample test. Second, B is less than C, so I will have to go for lower range. So, McNamara's test I have to use uh, with the small sample uh, test and this K is equal to 0 to B, B. that is lower range I will be considering uh, K combinations of ND, 0.5 power ND. I will have to calculate and I have to sum up for all the values of 0 to B. This K I have to vary from 0 to B. So, let me take k is equal to 0, k is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. Why did I stop at 4? b is equal to 4. I have to stop at b. So up to this particular value 4, I have to continue starting from 0. Right? For each value, I have to calculate this combination that ndk uh, into 0 0.5 power nd. That is 12c0. This is ndk. That is k combinations of nd. 12c0 into 0 0.5 power 12. That is 12 is total number of discordant pairs. Similarly, for different values of k, I have to calculate. All of these values, p values, I have to sum it. 
then I have to multiply it with the 2. I have to sum them, then I have to multiply with 2. So, here is the answer. So, for k is equal to 0 and uh, up to k is equal to 4, I get different answers. I will have to sum them up and multiply by 2, I get 0 0.388. 0 0.388 is 2 multiplied by sum of these values. So, what is what does it suggest? So, the value of calculated P is 0 0.388. My alpha value which I have taken earlier is 0 0.05. This is greater. The rule book says accept H0. What does it mean? The outcomes of antibody test and outcomes of RT-PCR test do not differ in their result. You can see that 8 is greater than 4 but still significantly it is not different. It is same. Two tests are same. Okay. Here I have another illustration, another method. What I did is same experiment. It's a cumulative result now. Over about four days, I con uh, collectively I got 120 samples. I continued my same method experimentation. Now after four days, I collect 120 samples. Those 120 samples I redistribute like this. Now again, I want to do the analysis using McNamara's test. So what do I find? Five and twenty. Type A 5, type B 20. So 5 and 20, total is 25. Okay, good. Now it is great, end is greater than 20. It's a large sample method. So I'll be going for uh, with the eights correction that chi square method I'll be using. So B minus C, that is B minus C, that is 5 minus 20, 15. Modulus is 15. 15 minus 1, 14. 14 square. So I have taken 5 minus 20, that is 15. Modulus are taken 15 minus 1, 14, 14 square divided by 25. So that gives you 7.84. Now, if you go for the chi square table for alpha is equal to 0 0.05 and degrees of freedom 1, you get the critical value is 0 0.3, 0 sorry, the critical value is 3.84. Compare this 3.84 versus 7.84, and uh, you see that chi square, the test statistic, is greater than tabled value. What you will do, you will be rejecting the H0. What does that mean now? Rejecting the H0. So, you will be saying that antibody test is different from artificial test results. These two tests differ much, but significantly. That is what is your eval analysis. So, the key takeaway from this particular lecture, uh, you find that uh, you can use this particular McNamara's test. It is a non-parametric test. You will be using it for a paired nominal data, sorry, it is a categorical data, need not be nominal only. You can use it for categ any categorical data, nominal or ordinal data also. So, set up two into two contingency tables, uh, concordant pair and discordant pair you identify. Discordant pair you will be saying a type A and type B, type A and type B, uh, type A is B, type B is a type of error here. Type B is C number of values are there, discordant pairs are ND. Based on whether it is a large sample or a small sample, you will be using chi-square test or these P equations. Uh, you need to be careful with the modulus here. So, you will be accepting or rejecting H0 based on a chi-square tabled value, critical value. For a low sample uh, value, a small sample value that is less than 20, you will be considering this B versus C. If B equal to C, P equal to 1. B is greater than C, you will be using this equation. B is less than C, you will be using this equation. In this, you see that you will be multiplying by 2 for 2 tail test. K combinations of ND, 0.5 over ND is same for 2 equation. What difference you make here is, if B is less than C, smaller B, start from 0 to B, lower portion, that is, uh, you will be cutting the K from 0 to ND, cutting at B, right, lower fraction and upper fraction. So, you will be using that, right. Yeah, that is the end of this video. Thank you.